Hello everybody, this will be a common mistake every trader kind of makes when they're first starting out trading, especially with the example of using market cipher B and just kind of my lessons that I've learned and mistakes that I've used in the past and kind of what's the right way of kind of doing it. Anyway, first and foremost, one of the ways is using, not looking at everything on market cipher B. For example, right here, they will see that, okay, price is making lower lows and momentum is making higher lows. However, they don't see that money flow is also like kind of decreasing too. Therefore, it won't be as a powerful move. When looking at market cipher B, you want to make sure that you are looking at money flow and momentum those are the main two things to really look at i have other videos on how to identify all of them but when i what i'm doing is looking at those specific two things when identifying a divergence and a way you can look at that too is that if you draw a horizontal or a vertical line from your the start of the divergence that you identified to about the end, we'll just use another vertical line right there. And if you use this drop down and hover over this candle where it starts here, you'll see, I don't know if I can use my mouse, but you can see that money flow is at a negative 0.522 level right now at, at that at that start of the candle. And then if you go to the current price, just hover your mouse over that candle. You can hover it just to the right, whatever. You can see the current money flow right now is a negative 9.45. And so that was mistake number one, is just really look at money flow and see if it's increasing with a bullish divergence and decreasing and coming down with a bearish divergence and it works both for regular and uh, hidden uh, divergences too. The next example I want to say is people front running a divergence, especially using the momentum. This isn't really the best example, but we're on the 12 minute here, right? And we can see that we are getting a divergence forming and people will kind of front run it saying like, oh yeah, momentum is is coming up right now. However, you can see that the VWAP, if you kind of zoom in even more, I'll bring this up a little bit. You can see that the VWAP is pointing down and pointing sideways. If you want to truly front run a divergence, I suggest the VWAP should be just barely touching the zero line or it's printing a green dot. When I say printing is like, the current candle has a green dot on it and the count and the countdown is waiting until the next candle until it becomes official on the next candle close. And so a good example of what to look for in the VWAP, um, just when you're wanting to front run it is that you want the VWAP to see, see right here where it's like barely not touching the zero line. You want to see it like pointing up in this tickling it in a way um, when it's going to be printing. And so that's a time when you guys want to be um, front running it if you want to. And that's if you get your other uh, confirmations like money flow coming up for bullish divergences and the RSI is looking good. And so with this too, to keep in mind is that you want to pay attention to how far away the VWAP is and what your momentum is doing. Now, yes, the VWAP can be coming up. However, the momentum on the next candle close can still be moving down. And sometimes it will move far enough down where it invalidates the divergence. And so I see a lot of people kind of get wrecked uh, doing that, front running it, and having the divergence quickly flip on them because they didn't pay enough attention to the what the VWAP was doing and didn't really wait until it, a green dot was printing or you had a clear momentum uh, divergence forming. 
The third m big mistake that I see uh, traders kind of doing is that they don't, they aren't patient enough really, and they don't wait for price to come towards a level. You want trades to come towards you or come towards a level. Let's say we have a golden pocket and other confluence or whatever. It's a level you're looking to trade and price is coming towards it. Well, that's great. You want to be looking for a divergence on say like the 12 minute, whatever. And you want to be looking for a divergence farming. And so traders most of the time will kind of front run it and they'll say, oh, close enough. And they won't look for a divergence or anything. And then price will actually reverse and kind of break that level. What the two most important things ever, in my opinion, well, three, actually, well, the first pr most important is having good risk management, only risking 1% per, per trade. The next is waiting for price to come towards a level and then seeing what your oscillator is doing. In this case, I'm using market cipher B. And so they kind of go hand in hand and this really increases the probabilities of winning a trade and remember that trading is mainly a probabilities game and you want to stack the probabilities of winning a trade or of price moving in an opposite direction or in your direction that you want to uh in, in trading and so that's kind of the main part of thinking about when trading another big mistake of when trading in general is that people try to catch a falling knife and catching a falling knife is very, 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 very difficult, especially when using leverage. Like for example, during the March, 2020 crash, I saw people kind of say, oh, here's a one hour divergence and prices just coming down like a freight train on them. And they're trying to catch the bottom. Usually during big crashes, you want to wait for the market to stabilize and have patience. You want to see it wait and trade a range. Therefore, I would probably not have taken uh, trades when this happened and we had this big daily candle. I think price went down like, what, 60% on that day or whatever. And you kind of want to see price form a range and know what to look for. And so I would have probably stayed out of the markets for like a week and then wait for the markets to stabilize and then maybe started trading around here when we had a kind of a clear range forming and so um my best advice to you is probably buy a spot and other things for your investment portfolio and kind of put your trading portfolio aside uh just for like a week or so until the markets kind of stabilize and here you'll just kind of save yourself a headache and save yourself from losing a lot of money. <laughs> the next big common mistakes I see beginners doing is that they will want to trade action and they want a lot of trading action. And so they'll go down to like the six minute, three minute and one minute time frame, and just keep on looking for scalps. Now, some of these can work, but usually you, you get eaten up by fees along with, um, not knowing a significant level and therefore price may reject on them and kind of not go as far as they're expecting to. And so as a beginner, I would only trade uh, using Marcus Ever B, only using the one hour time frame, the four hour time frame, and maybe the 30 minute time frame. But really you should just keep it simple and trade the divergences that show up on to that until you get better at it. Even, even if you have to paper trade too, that even works better too. And last but not least, uh, probably this is probably the most I've seen, uh, biggest mistake I've seen is FOMOing. And usually people will get absolutely wrecked when they FOMO. Um, they'll see price dumping like it is kind of right now. And they're like, oh, this FOMO is short now. And then uh, once price starts pumping uh, like this right here, someone will like, oh, let's fumble along. And then they just get absolutely wrecked uh, based off of that, based off of their emotions. And so 
Uh, the trick to really trading is kind of trade really with no emotion, wait for price to come towards your level, see if your indicator is showing a divergence or kind of telling you what's going on and then trade based off of that level. And so that's uh, pretty much it. Um, I'm sure I'll probably be making another video when I see and talk to more beginners. But anyways, if you guys like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Plus I'll leave a link in the description to a free discord where I post all my trades along with crypto, other crypto related ideas. And I'll leave a link to market cipher, the indicator I'm using right here in the description. Thanks. Bye.